Uh, welcome to uh, the first uh, 2013 Communication Commission meeting on January 16th at 7.03 p.m. Call to order. In attendance is our full crew. Yay. Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, has everybody had a chance to read in a, uh, the agenda as presented? Uh, do we have a motion to uh, approve or are there any changes? Do we have a second? second? And we have a second. And second is by Sean? Okay, great. All righty. We've approved the minutes, and now we will go to the standing board. We have new people tonight, and I'd like to introduce them. Our new liaison is Lauren Smith. And then we have our other new member, Ute O'Connor, who's our new commissioner. Welcome, everyone. And why don't we start with Lauren and your uh, township board liaison presentation, please. Uh, I don't necessarily have anything to give right now. Um, the one thing that I do want to mention is we will have to appoint the next chair or if Kathy stays on as chair, but that has to be voted on and um, brought to the March 25th meeting for our annual meeting. So that would probably be good for us to consider over the next couple of weeks and then bring that to a vote on the February meeting. I thought we'd just take care of it tonight. Sure, that's fine. That's okay. Yeah, if good. nobody else has good. any... Yep. Yeah, that's our, that's fine. We're yep. all here. Yep. <laughs> and we can handle that under new business. All righty. Uh, Ted, our cable department supervisor. All right. The other thing you guys have to uh, vote upon before April 1st is if you want to televise next year. Yeah, all the commissions it's, um, have to vote on it once a year, so that's a February or March item. What do you want to do it? Okay, I've got a bunch of stuff here, so I'm going to hand, hand this stuff out uh, as we go along. First item I just handed Kathy is a letter from Fred Eaton from Comcast Corporation uh, that came to uh, our new clerk, uh, Eric Ranka, about a week ago. Uh, I had a conversation with Fred Eaton. Basically, it's concerned we are between uh, uncertainty, I guess is the best word. Officially, we are operating under the 2006 uh, Michigan. Uh, Cable Act, which says that there is no local negotiation for franchise fees and franchise cable. Uh, there has been a lawsuit from the city of Detroit that initially the city of Detroit has won. Um, I presently have our uh, legal attorney uh, looking at the ramifications of that. He has not come back with me. Um, according to Fred Eaton, if Detroit wins, Comcast, Wow, I mean, Ameritech, or at and are going to appeal. And if Detroit loses, Detroit's going to appeal. So where we stand right now is that this is a letter basically notifying us that Comcast wants to renew, intends to renew our agreement, um, which expires November 26, 2015. According to Fred, uh, Comcast has every intention of renewing the, the agreement as it stands. Um, the only downside that I see is that traditionally when you renewed a franchise agreement, there was a little uh, cash involved, and I don't see the cash going to be involved this time. So uh, what we did with the cash the last time there was an agreement was this room. Uh, Ameritech at the time, which is now WOW, gave us $35,000 and the Comcast gave us forty when we uh, did the uh, negotiations. And we put, our, we put all that into this room and um, that's, that's the main part of how this was developed. And they said that one of the issues that's before this commission over the course of this, the end of this year, next year, and the following year will be um, modernizing all our equipment and modernizing this room. It would have been grateful if there was some cash involved in a franchise fee, but as of right now, with the legal uncertainty and Detroit's going to appeal or Comcast and Wild's going to appeal, 
Um, there probably isn't going to be any upfront cash on, uh, on the renewal of the franchise fee. But Can we ask for it? Actually, as, as of right now, we can't negotiate. It's a statewide agreement. And the local municipalities cannot negotiate individually. And that's why Detroit's suing. All right, so if Detroit wins, then the, the power will come back to the local municipalities. But as of now, it's a state franchise. AT&T wrote the law, Comcast the law, obviously joined and saw benefit to join it. So in 2006, they changed the whole ballgame. So um, actually, we're living, you know, you know, I don't even know what the legal status is because we're living under the agreement from 2000 when we signed with them. But in all reality, no longer, state of no longer in existence. It's, we're just living under the uh, under the guidelines. So Com basically Comcast is providing service and providing um, you know, a channel for us, a channel for the school, while it's providing a channel for us, a channel for the school. Ameritech's not providing, or is providing a channel for the whole area, and, you know, which we are taking advantage of if school isn't. And Comcast has uh, a, a public access channel buried somewhere up in Southfield or Franklin somewhere that nobody can get to it. So. Um, but they're honoring the agreement, even though it's... They are honoring the spirit of the agreement, right. but there's no money going, other than our franchise fee, but which I remind you is 5% from Comcast, 5% from WOW, and 7% at AT&T because we had to buy the encoder and we had to pay for the T1 line to get the AT&T people to have local television. Yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong. I thought it was three percent from Comcast. Oh, no, it's five. It's five, five and five. five okay. Five and seven. Okay, I thought it was three. Thank you. Ted, how long is the contract for? They're traditionally fifteen years, so the, the, retire, the expiration date in that letter states the twenty-sixth of November, twenty fifteen. But there's no chance in them going away. It's just, it's just the well, agreement. The service will continue. Service will continue. It's just under what law? Mm -hmm. You know, is it going to? They overturned the 2006 law. That it probably somebody's going to rewrite a new law, and they're, you know, because I'm sure AT&T and Wall and Comcast are not going to stand by idly. Okay. So, but Fred Eaton did say uh, he, he was blunt about it. He said we're just we're just going to operate the same way we have been operating. And it's always been my concern that at some point cable companies would just pull the channel because they can sell that. Mm -hmm. To you know, other other channels a lot it could become profitable, and that's why one of the reasons we have uh, you know we have the streaming video and the cap we have the capability of providing information to the, the island without cable television. So we have that to take hold. And and from everything I'm hearing, people are watching it. And if it's wrong, they let me know. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, any other questions about that? Okay, I come all the things here. Um, one thing I want to invite you to, um, over the past year, well, actually a couple of years ago, uh, it was brought up that uh, we should seek out more co cooperation you know, with our neighbors. And I've developed a relationship with the Riverview uh, IT department or cable department. They run their cable through their IT department. And um, we came up with a project about 18 months ago, and it was basically um, it was going to—it's a documentary on the Cambridge, and uh, it, the documentary is done. Um, I had very little to do with the production other than steering it, kind of help write the script. Um, but most of the uh, production and interviews were done by the lady that works at Riverview, Maria. She always does, she does a lot of work here. But a long story short, it, it, I think it's come out very nice, and she is going to premiere this documentary. I think it's Friday, February 1st, 7 o'clock, at the Presbyterian Church. And uh, you're all invited to stop by. No refreshments going on the cheap. Yeah. But, um, 
it's about 40 minutes long and she calls it Boyd's Bridge. And uh, I didn't know, but I guess the, the original man who built it was named Boyd. So, uh, what was the date on that then? About uh, February 1st, Friday. And after that day, I have a copy, and, and after the February, that weekend, I'll start playing it every day. I'm, you know, just tell everybody sick of it. So, probably for a couple of months, we'll play it. Ted, I'm sorry, you said February 1st at what time? I think it's 7 o'clock at the Presbyterian Church, but I, I'll get an email out to you after I verify that. Is there going to be um, an announcement put in the old camera? Uh, are they promoting this, advertising this already? Or? Well, basically what uh, Maria did is she promised old people um, from the smokes and everybody that represented the bridge and everybody that they got that she'd have like a private show. So this is an open to the public. It's, I'm inviting you as the you know, cable commission. Um, I think it's called a soft open, like a, at a store. Because uh, yeah. they're they're going to put this into a um, competition in the summer a Canadian uh, Film Fest, so it's a soft rollout. It's it's not it, it's not something they want uh, a lot of it's, press uh, about. It's very it, it, it really goes into the history and there's uh, interviews of people who witnessed the accidents and mm -hmm. and you know it talks about the early history of the bridge and the rebuilding it and gives the specifications. It's pretty. Uh, for a 40-minute documentary, it's pretty uh, encompassing, and I think uh, in the long term it'll be a nice piece in the museum for future people to, you know, and they are, their, their Correct me if I'm wrong, but they are working, they worked with the Historical Society on Gross Hill to... Right, uh, we, yeah, yeah. She, uh, Maria actually, you know, contacted the Burden Center downtown, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, we needed some pictures of a historic uh, brewery, so we we had a trip up to Frank and Ruth and shot some photos up there and there's a lot of historic pictures in it so um, I would, basically I was surprised at how well it came out and uh, I just you know, I just wanted to mention if you're interested it'll be on, on that day. Um, let's see what else I got here. Did you say Boyd's Bridge? B-O-Y-D? B-O-I-G-T-F. I thought it was Void. V O I G. There's a Void Street. Yeah, it's Void. It's V O I G H T. I guess you owned the whole north end of the island. Yeah, he did. 100 years ago. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to get this is an update. We have, at present, especially for the new members, we have an RFP out for a website design. As of today, Dale has received, I think, four or five. Inquiries which he has answered. Um, I guess what's the day of February, end of February? Uh, February 7th. All right, so um, in the next meeting we'll have whatever proposals have come in. I don't think we've got a firm, I don't know, if you've got a firm proposal, and I know we've gotten a bunch of inquiries, so. There has not been a bid coming right. yet. But anyway, I just wanted, does anybody need a copy of that? I would like one, Ted. And I, you all have had them sent to you too, so it is on your email. Mm -hmm. Just so you have, know that. Madam Chair, mm -hmm. yes. yes, I have a, a question for you. Um, do you know, for instance, if this was if this RFP was also posted on the Michigan inter uh, uh, intertrade uh, website? You know, where they put out. I know. 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 I Mm -hmm. attended a meeting here in this room with the school board and um, other officials in Brian Loftus concerning Granicus. Granicus is a provider for our streaming video and our archiving. Um, I guess at the last meeting of the board on Monday, a topic uh, near and dear to my heart, uh, paperless meetings, was brought up and discussed and the discussion was started. I, I first heard about paperless meetings probably in 98, 99 when some communities like Troy, Birmingham and uh, Blue Hill Hills and stuff started going into that. I think it's actually even more feasible today than it's ever been. 
Uh, what we have to do as a commission, we have to update our, our encoder. Um, right now, we, we bought the encoder about two and a half years ago. Um, we own the encoder, and basically the encoder is where the video goes into the encoder and turns it into computeries and sends it to uh, uh, Granicus and it sends it to AT&T so the AT&T customers can have uh, uh, video. Um, what we need to do is we need to get an upgraded encoder which will allow us to uh, turn our video into an application so smartphones can get it and iPads can get it and whatever else they've come up with in the last two and a half years. Um, so what we have to do is we're not going to buy a new encoder, we're going to lease it. And it's a down payment of $2,500 and $100 a month. And I've got all the information here so you can have it. Ted, that was approved last, there was a motion made last time about it and approved. Mm-hmm. November. Hmm? All right, well, basically, I want everybody to know what we're going to do. So yeah. the, the, other, the other part about it is the township board is going to have, and Eric, are going to have to decide. We have, at the moment, duality on our services. We are paying Granicus money for services we're not using, and we're paying another company for services that uh, basically meant it's an agenda. We are going to be, have the capability to... Uh, have met the minutes on demand, agenda on demand, and one of the things this will be able to do is, if, as a consumer, if you go to uh, an archive meeting and you want to see when Ted stood up and talked, you can type my name in and it'll tell you what meetings I was at, and if you go to a specific video and type my name in and you know, say Ted talking about Granicus, it'll go right to that spot of the video so consumers don't have to. We are not using that service right now, but just with this new encoder that uh, we're going to upgrade to, um, it'll allow us to do that. And they'll also archive the minutes, they mark the minutes, so if you go to a specific spot in minutes and hit the, hit the whatever, however they encode it, it'll go right to that spot in the video, so you can actually check the minutes against the video. And we're not using that because we're paying another service um, to archive our minutes. So there's going to have to be a decision made on one or the other. So, Ted, um, just, just out of curiosity, is this proprietary uh, that they're doing, uh, the encoding and all that? The reason I'm asking is if Granite is, uh, you know, I'm not familiar with the company, but uh, what if they go out of business? Uh, is there another company, a competitor that can come in and pick up where they left off? You know, we addressed that, and I don't remember their answer right off. off hand. We, did. Had, we did address that, and it, it's been quite a while. But I, I, we, we met with them in October. Yeah, I, I think they would hand us the data, but again, without their their software, if I'm not mistaken, there were there were little glitches to it. What, what, am, I, am I wrong? See, see, that's it, it's been quite a while, but. I, they, I, they, they, I, they, I don't remember the details, but they reassured us that yeah. we would have access to the data if they went out of business, which, you know, they didn't see it. Because they're in 50 states and nine, 900 communities right now, so. Now, and I think it's backed up because they, they when they, it's, it go, I think it goes to Oregon. I thought they had they three also places. have an East Coast yeah. backup, so yeah. it's. You know they're they're backing each other up. You know, in East I think it's Virginia and Oregon. They have you know, data centers across mm -hmm. for back backup for disaster recovery. I get that. I guess my next question. I mean, I know this is a closed deal, but what made you go with Granicus? Did, was there a proposal and RFP for other companies as well? We uh, I, I just as this goes back four or five years, we uh, we we were looking for that. We tried some free services and we were unsuccessful streaming and archiving and we uh, found Granicus contacted them and had them come out make a proposal to uh, to the commission and Brian and, and after much discussion we voted on it and went with them. You know. 
It's, it's been well received. Yeah, the reason we chose Granicus is because we talked to others, but the reason Granicus appealed to us is that this encoder that they sold us solved two problems. It solved streaming and archiving, 24-7 streaming and archiving, but it also gave us these two outlets on this encoder. It gave us uh, the ability to send the signal to AT&T. Because in order to get at t we had to buy an encoder and the T1 line, send it to AT&T so they could put it on channel 99. And this solution was appealing to us because it offered streaming, archiving, and the at t solution for what we thought the initial encoder was going to cost us just for the at t solution. So basically that was the reason we went with the uh, ground. Solve two problems. Mm -hmm. Have you ever thought about doing something like YouTube? Yeah, I haven't. Uh, no, we have a YouTube, YouTube, YouTube channel. Unused YouTube mm -hmm. account, but that was set up with some of my uh, experts that are now in college that I had to recontact. To. I'll be honest with you, <laughs> the kids dragged me into some new technology, <laughs> so. Something to consider. I mean, it is free and it does the archiving. And I think Granicus, is, it, from when I was talking to some of the other, uh, when we were talking about bids last year, mm -hmm. they, they were saying, well, we have these capabilities, but Granicus is really the premier. I mean, when you have your competitor t complimenting Granicus, it's kind of like, I guess we went with the right one. They, they seemed very high on them, and they're the competitor. Is this what the other municipalities are using then? A lot of them do, yes. Our neighboring municipalities? Uh, that I can't tell you. Uh, what about Riverview? Is that? I think we jumped into it. We've jumped into it. I think people have come to us since well, then. We've jumped into it before a lot of the yeah. neighboring. Uh, uh -huh. But like, like I said, the real reason we went, we were going to have to buy an encoder anyway. We were, we were collecting 2% a month from all our at t customers and not providing for 2000 seven or eight whenever we went online with at t we were providing them service till two years ago. So we were gonna at some point buy an encoder. Sure. And and and, the, and get the, into it. And it was in the prices that I was getting was seven, eight thousand dollars for this unit. So when we started talking about we, we did some pre streaming, uh, I think for Ustream I think was the company we went to and it was, you know, it was on again, off again, on again, and then uh, this company offered us not only streaming, archiving, minutes, capability, and all this other stuff, it offered us the AT&T solution, so that's, that's why we... So AT&T runs on a different format? Yeah, it's, it's, a, it's basically a you know computer channel. The Channel 99 has, you go to Channel 99, it has a menu there, of all the municipalities that it serves in this area, or any, everywhere from Chico Harbor, I think uh, Woodhaven's on it, we're on it, uh, you know, Inkster Garden City, Blue Hills, Grove Points, and, and basically you go to whatever channel you want, click on that, and it'll come up on AT&T, but it's all on the same channel, channel 99. So as an AT&T customer, you can watch Warren, you know, Birmingham, West Bloomfield. No. And you can you can actually go back and forth and it's kind of neat. So you get Grosil cable, Grosil meetings, Grosil events, but if you're interested in seeing what's going on in another town, and conversely, people in other towns, yeah. uh, as long as we're on there, can also see what's going on in Grosil. So I, I'm an AT&T customer. So the main benefit is really for AT&T as opposed to WOW or Comcast subscribers. The what, the, the streaming? Yeah. Right, the, the, that, it provided service to the AT&T customers because AT&T never had any intention of providing local television. Mm -hmm. I mean, they gave one channel to the whole community and we're paying it. Hey, Comcast and WOW, you know, Pick up the cost of local television. Eighteen key parts of the community to pick up.
And, and that was the wave of the future, because that was the last agreement that we signed with AT&T. Right? Well, you know, and I, I still haven't talked to the wall people, but and by the way, if, if you've got any complaints about wall, wall was messing up over the holidays. From Taylor on south, they were, they were, uh, one of my basketball players. Uh, they, they, they had trouble, all the communities from Taylor on south had uh, intermittent service. I guess it was operating well during the day and at five, six o'clock they were set themselves off. So from what I can tell, talking to a couple other uh, people that, you know, run communities, it's all been fixed, but it was a widespread problem. In uh, November, we already voted to mm -hmm. purchase this? Mm -hmm. It's a done deal. Basically, what, the, the other benefit of upgrading is, besides the new services and the ability to start providing, um, the word is basically the uh, iPhone <coughs> capability and, uh, and uh, iPod capability. Um, now I lost my thought. I'm getting Alzheimer's real quick up here. Um, <laughs> just quick question while you're thinking then, Ted. This is here, just on page two, it just says, like, um, we'll receive the ability to use iLegislate application for iPad. What about people that have droid-based tablets? At the moment, do they were developing. They're yeah, developing they were working right now. now. Is that this good? was as of October. I haven't talked to the salesman. I'm not sure what the mm -hmm. status is. I'm sure I'm going to hear from him tomorrow morning because uh, I gave him the date of this meeting and mm -hmm. I'm sure I'll have, I can ask that. Yeah, I, I would just be curious because that'd be, that not everybody up. has iPads. Some yeah. people have I, I tablets, think nooks, what have you, which is Troy based. I think Supervisor Loft has brought that up. Yeah, he has the question. And, and this is a lease, we, and the, the, the big push about it was that uh, they will replace it as things improve. Yeah, we're never going we're to, never have have to buy it again. Loft. That was a big thing. Uh, you know, you're paying for it once, but you, uh, they will keep upgrading and upgrading it so that everybody, we don't have a problem with uh, not having the right technology to match what they're sending out. And that was mm -hmm. a big push. Anytime they upgrade the technology, we will be upgraded. And if we have the, we, we will have a backup if it ever fails on our end and they can they have 24 seven service. So as soon as we call them, they give us a mm -hmm. replacement. Because if it breaks down, it's their responsibility from here on in. And, and they'll get us a new one, but we also have a backup that we could hook up real quick and continue service. Oh, okay, the next, the next thing I want to bring up. Ted, real quick, how long is the lease for? It's for uh, a year, right? And initially, it's $100 a month, okay. right? And we have, and, and yeah, it's $100 a month. So, uh, I guess we're not to tell as long as we keep it, you know. Right, and then when are they going to install it? Uh, well, we haven't made a kind. I think it takes four to six weeks once okay. you uh, sign the contract, so it'd be probably by March or April first. Actually, actually, the proposal is calling that twenty-five hundred upfront for hardware. Well, if we're going to get a home. That's a down. That's a, a down payment, like when you lease a car. You know, you, you, and we're not the whole cost, the initial cost of a new unit. Was six thousand dollars. So I'm sure we're looking. I'm sure they figured that the lifespan of that will be two, three years, and they'll bring another one in. But they'll replace it for now. That's our last. That's our last cost. Um, something that we have to do is a. It just keeps getting brought up uh, by the administration and Brian um, over the last four years. Um, the school and and us as a commission. Um, the school sat in on a lot of these uh, over the last couple of um, uh, months. Uh, Kathy and I have seen some demonstrations on equipment and the school has been very anxious to upgrade their channel which is uh, being held together by uh, Bubblegum and uh, Dale and Lawyer and stuff. Um, but when they get the cost of what they need to do they, they don't have the money to do it. So there is now a, been a, the question has been asked by the school, can we cooperate more? What can we do? Can they buy some of our old equipment? Because, you know, we, they're aware of what we're looking at. 
So what we have to do is make a decision. Uh, the last budget that we did at the, at the cable commission with, with the uh, board, it was suggested that we look at all our equipment and come up with a capital improvement plan, uh, find out what it would cost, uh, and basically renovate and upgrade our technical capability to provide meetings and, and, and television, which hasn't been upgraded since 2000. Now all the equipment we purchased in 2000 was late 1999 equipment, so we're looking at equipment at the next at the end of the next uh, year will be 15 years old, which includes these cameras, these big monsters that we got here, and in the in the control room, the computer that we're using is now uh, the company that made it is no longer in service, and a couple of the company that bought that it's hard to get a hold of. Uh, so our, our switcher, our, our tr Trinity computer that we bought in 1998 is uh, still working, but uh, very delicately. And we play some tricks to fool it some days. So over the course of the year, we've had uh, people come out, look at the state of what our equipment, give us a few bids. We've looked at new equipment. And we basically came up with a three-year plan, which includes what's left of the budget this year, um, capital improvement money next year, and capital improvement the following year. And, and what we've decided is, or what we hope to do is this year, if you time it just right, like March 31st and April 1st, you can use money from this budget and the next budget, uh, replace the cameras in this room, which have not, there's been absolutely no work on them. They're, they're three-chip uh, three digital with high-definition, smaller cameras. Um, replace the switcher in the control room and all, all, the, all the television capability in the control room. That would be the first year. The second year, really work at the sound system. And the third year, the, the way that we send the meetings out. Right now we use a uh, electronics unit um, that's like three generations old, and um, with this this new equipment right now, Airwave is the brand name that we've been looking at. Electronics has a new unit called Nexus, and they're uh, self-contained um, units to to set up the video to the different channels. And it has, it has many more capabilities. But anyway, it's a three year capital improvement plan. Where the ply the ointment comes in is the school wants to get involved with this. They either want two options. They want some of our old equipment, because they're even further back than we are, they're a generation or two be, behind us, or the option of televising from this room. But that's a decision that I can't make. I don't think as a board you could, I mean, I'm sure we would welcome them, but I think there needs to be some discussion. Lauren, and you might have to work with the board to lead that and see if it's uh, functional to get the school to come down here and we could send their channel out here. You know, at what cost? I don't know. Um, or, uh, they have the other, the other option is they have a, a, a newer switcher that you know the, it's a TriCaster is the unit we're looking at. They have a TriCaster, but that's the only really good piece of equipment they got. So if we were to marry our services, there'd be equipment that we have that we could provide to them, and they could let us use the TriCaster. Uh, their, the quality of their replay, the, the ability for them to play more and more on their channel would uh, triple. Right now, they, 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 the only thing they have going out is the live feed because their playback is just, just not working. All right. So it needs to be before we totally decide what we're going to do, this idea of working together with them should be explored. Have you done a needs analysis of what we need here as a township, as well as has the schools done? Yeah, we had that? people come out here and, and tell us, uh, basically, they, they, we're living on a prayer right now. Right. I mean, all, you guys know about electronic equipment, and we're talking about 
stuff that's 15 years old. That's equipment wise, but also timing. When timing. you look at just other yeah. resources as far as, you know, if, meetings. If we're going to be recording more meetings, if, you know, what else could well, we be doing? Uh, you you what probably be stop? some juggling. I mean, right now, Tuesdays is a first Monday is open. Uh, the second Monday is, uh, no, the first Monday is uh, open space. Second Monday is the DPS. Uh, third Monday is bike. Fourth Monday is CVA. Or Tuesday. So there, there, you would have to take, but there are open dates, and they televise one meeting. They tell us, you know, so one, there'd be a date, you know, for a Wednesday, for, I mean, they might have to change the date to accommodate it, but there are open dates. We uh, basically we put like eight or nine or ten meetings depending on cancellations here. Plus we we still cover their meeting. You know we you know I pay people to go over there and cover their meeting. Mm -hmm. No charge to them. But uh, uh, they just they their meeting is shown once. The quality of it is uh, they have really one ship their their cameras that are you know they opened that in 2000 so they're going on 13 years old. Uh, their playback is um, a generation behind ours and uh, and it's not working. Um, and the stuff that we're looking at is commercial grade equipment, correct? Or is right. this, because that, I mean realistically if you think about just consumer grade, it's, I mean, this has probably got more capabilities than just about everything unfortunately in this room. So again, going back to a needs analysis, do we need to replace every piece of equipment? Is there things that we can do with smaller technology that is probably lower cost that could be replaced easy, more easily and maybe more effectively if we don't sign long-term contracts for leases and things along those lines? If, well, we, you know, we, don't, we don't have any lease on any equipment. Well, yeah, we at this point. <laughs> well, the only thing that we would think of leasing is because of the the streaming, but right. everything here we all. Ted, um, you you talked about the three-year plan, and you outlined for us things like the switcher and the cameras and stuff. Maybe for the next meeting, it would be helpful for us to see yeah. um, that in writing. That'd be great. And oh, okay. look at this, um, <laughs> Madam Chair. Sure. If I can ask, to ask help that's, yourself. That's an estimate. That's the last time we went to um, Ann Arbor. Yeah. Last year, I attended a, um, a session that was put on by the Michigan Association of Planning, and one of the sessions they talked about was uh, intergovernmental agreements, and uh, it's, it's something actually that uh, Sharon Gray knows quite a bit about, and uh, Dale Liam, and it might be something to raise with the board, the rec and to Mooney. The Recreation Department has a number of intergovernmental agreements um, between the township and the schools, uh, the township and local cities like River and Trenton and so forth. And what these agreements, uh, there's actually online where you can get templates for the things to look for in these agreements. And obviously it's something that the governor um, wants communities to engage in. 15 years ago, 20 years ago, uh, before we built this building, there was talk of the township and the schools uniting in the 1911 building and creating a municipal complex. And uh, obviously that never happened. But there are opportunities here, I think, that is great enough uh, for the two governmental entities to work together to share costs and resources and one of those intergovernmental agreements can be used to say, you, know, you use the word marry services. Uh, this is what we can bring to the marriage. This is what you bring to the marriage. And um, I think one resource that the schools have that we really enjoy having access to is the kids uh, and the classrooms where the kids are interested actually in working for TED and working for GIT. And so there's opportunities, not just from the technical or the um, equipment side, but also on the human resources side, right? And I mean, that's where the innovation comes from, too, is these, these kids come in here and they, and, you know, they show us, you know, what is new, what is hot, and how to 
get out, get our word out there. So I think this is a, a dialogue that's really worth um, starting. I think what I'm suggesting is, to, I don't know if it would come from this commission or Laura would have to be the lead person with the board, but I'd like to see a meeting with Bill Ice and uh, Tony Krakowski and uh, obviously um, Mr. Loftus and maybe, maybe the clerk's department and, and Lauren and you um, and see if the school is interested in the school would have to, they, they like their autonomy, I'll be honest with you. They like being in a different building than us. They like having their own. But to be honest with you, they don't have the money to upgrade to where they got. They're, they, what they have is very old cameras. They have an excellent switching system in a TriCaster, mm -hmm. which is computerized and digital, and they can record right to it. But once they record to this TriCaster, the unit to send it out in playback, they have to translate it back to a tape. And they put it on a Panasonic 1968, uh, that's the model number, uh, super VHS deck that A has never been cleaned and B was bought in 1999. So you cannot, in fact, you cannot even get parts for this thing anymore. So basically they can record it and make it look nice with graphics and everything, but then they have to take it down back to tape and play it back on tape. And they don't have the they don't have the ability to play it back from the TriCaster and send it out, you know, ahead of today's technology. So what they, what Tony and I have talked about is, you know, I, I mentioned this unit called the Airway, which is a playback machine. That would, you know, would accept the signal from the TriCaster and then send it out to WOW and send it out to Comcast. So it would send it back, you know, in its original digital form. But uh, they didn't have the money to buy that. So what I, what I was thinking is if we have this meeting, they set priorities, we had come out and know where we're going to go together, maybe in our plan instead of purchasing year one's idea that we've come up with. Maybe we purchased it year three, which is a unit the airway, which would allow us, if they would come here, we could send out multiple channels from this location, and which would solve their playback. It would upgrade how much stuff they can send out. Upgrade, you know, because let me go back once to our playback right now, and I, I think I've told this commission story a couple times, broke about three years ago. And I took it to Holt Lansing, Lansing near Holt, Michigan, and I gave them our unit. And I, they said, well, here, use this unit until we fix your happen. unit. <laughs> they got our unit. I got their unit. Their unit's working. They haven't called me up and asked me for it, so I'm not telling them about it because it's basically a loaner. I'm using the loaner car for three years here. So our equipment is already denigrated. So at some point we're going to have to upgrade it. So, but what I'm looking at is instead of us doing something and then forcing them to do something, if there is a will, if there is a uh, uh, ability to work together, which we haven't cemented, let's see if we can get that done, and then together we can make smarter decisions. I was going to ask you, do you know currently if the high school has any kind of a video production class that they teach or anything well, like they, that? When they, when they built a media center, if you've been in their library, there's a room, if you go all the way through their library, there's a room that was designated for media, but once again, because of budgetary, they haven't, they haven't really progressed. If the kids at Girls Hill want to take media, they get bus motor to Gibraltar because Gibraltar has a video class. Um, let me ask you, uh, how long are these uh, prices good for? Uh, I'm sure we'd have to get them got 90 days, I think they were. And I, when, I, when I got them, I told uh, to Paul Tyson that we yeah. met. I told Paul that we wouldn't do anything until the end of the budget year, and he understood that. So that, that these would probably be ballpark at the, at the moment. That, 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 those were, we, what did we see them in October? Yeah. 
Yeah, I think it was. We're going to call that October, so I'm sure it's 90 days. Of 60 season. days is what it says. It says right here. Yeah. Yeah. 60 days is on the court. But we've always uh, uh, saw, and, and we're not locked into Solner. I mean, that was that was the beginning, and Paul understands that if we bought all the stuff, we'd go off a bit. Um, there aren't as many uh, uh, video suppliers out there as there was. There's a new one in Lansing. I didn't know. Livonia, I just heard about, so I haven't checked into them. But Paul, this was, this was Thalner did us a service by evaluating our equipment and giving us a ballpark figure of what. And basically, these are things we asked for. So they did, and they weren't pushing anything. These are things that I asked them about. Um, I mean, there's different options on it. Like I said, the playback unit we used from a company called Electronics, which is a leader in that. They have a um, a unit that's almost like the airwave. It's called a Nexus, and um, I haven't priced that out. But be, you know, before you know, what, not before we uh, get that far, I really would like to make this decision and see if the school. I know. It was, I know. Last term, it was a high priority on, on Brian's list. Cooperation between the school. And we actually we had Bill Ice come to a meeting about two years ago with Tim Rooney. And we discussed everything the school does for the rec department, which is, if you, if you sit down and think about it, uh, the school provides so much to the, to the rec department. And, and I go back to when I first hired in and I first ate lunch with Tim and Tim sat me down and said, hey, listen, treat the schools good because the schools treat me good. You know, so it's, it, it, we've been kind of operating on a handshake. I know there's, Communities have agreements, but it's kind of been if the school needs something, um, we've been providing it because if Tim needs something, the school's been providing it. So it, we've kind of been, you know, give and take. Like for instance, in December, the school had a a um, real long um, assembly. I've been out of school for a assembly on bullying and respect. They brought a, a person in from another high school and gave. A, and they called us up and asked us to tape it for them, and we did. And, you know, and it's just, it's just you know, kind of like reciprocal. So that's how we've been operating. But um, like I said, I really would like before we proceed and maybe make us not a mistake, but if we go in a direction that we could have made a better decision and help the schools and us. Um, you know, I'd like to do that. Well, I think that's a smart idea, and I think. Um I can certainly coordinate a meeting between all the individuals, Kathy, yourself, mm -hmm. Brian, and all the folks from the school district so that we can get everybody in the same room to talk about our needs and our wants and see where we can and, fill in know, some blanks. And I can't tell you how, how much that would help. I, I really, you know, it's all the same islands, all the same kids. Yeah, oh yeah. You know, it's, yeah. You know, well, I know it's two governments, but it's... We're at the top, you know. Well, and Ted, remember, um, you know, a hundred years ago when when you came on board, and I think I don't know if Sean was on the commission at the because you've been Sean's been on the commission in the past. Mm -hmm. um, one of the original um, tenets of the uh, franchise agreements were that the that the resources be split between the schools and the township, and for many years we even had. Um, a school board liaison or a school liaison active on the on the commission. Um, the obviously the scope of this commission has grown and changed, you know, way beyond just looking at the agreement. And the agreement essentially is a handshake now too, right? Our franchise agreement. But it would certainly um, honor that past history if our two groups could come back together and, and work together. And well, basically, I, I, to be honest with you, I have not been covering as many school events for two reasons. Um, they probably have stopped asking. I have never really said no to them, but I'm not seeking them out like I used to. I used to go to them, and because I had all these kids working for me, and they'd say, well, this is happening, this is happening, and I'd call up, hey, do you want this covered? You know, because of budgetary constraints, uh, you know, where I'm not sending as many out, you know. Uh, we did cover the fifth grade uh, Christmas concert, and uh, you know we covered uh, when the football team was trying to get to states. We we followed them, um, but uh, 
but we haven't chased down as many school events as we used to, which, you know, those are the fun events. I, I saw one the other day, and I thought, maybe I'm too late, they're going to have a math bee or like a spelling bee at the middle school, and I, I almost picked up the phone today, but I slapped my own hand, so I didn't do it. But, but. Well, and, and remember, too, um, when the township uh, sold Township Hall on Macomb Street, and for all intents and purposes, uh, we didn't have a boardroom. We um, moved to Hangar 2. Um, the schools took us in. I, I know there were arrangements made. There were, you know, um, handshakes, obviously, but they made it very easy for us to transition to host our meetings either in the middle school music room or at Park Lane Elementary School. And um, I think it it just makes sense for us now that they're running into some issues that we reach out to them as well. And I would suggest that if we, and I, I think it's a great idea for us to merge, um, but I would suggest that if we do that, that maybe we suggest to them that it would be great if there were um, a video you know, class. Because then, in, I, I understand they're part of a consortium and they probably go to these other schools as part of that deal. But if we had it here, then those same kids could be the kids that could come and work with you, uh, they could cover more events, you know, on their own as well, and I think it would benefit everyone in the long run, and, as, and especially the kids who would get that experience. Well, they did have a plan. I remember Jennifer Park, when she was on this commission, she she was trying to set it up where they would, you know, stream their games on the web page and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that, that's, all, that's all in. Uh, I guess I'm, I'm repeating myself now. I, th I think we've, we've uh, talked about it enough, and we've got a good plan. Warren, you'll get back to all of us with a date? Okay. In I just have one question. I'm sorry. Kathy. Go ahead. Um, maybe I missed it, but is there analysis schedules or notes that detail the need for all these all this equipment? You said you said there was a needs assessment, and maybe you've already shared it, but it, I, this isn't. Back in April and May of last year, Thalner came out, and they sent uh, two different gentlemen out. And uh, basically, it was they, we walked through together and looked at the equipment, looked at the dates, and they installed all this, so they were aware of the history of most of it. Uh, there's a gentleman by the name of Art that comes out, and, he's, and it was basically a walkthrough him and I together. And then they went back, and and the I, the uh, quotes that I sent you are from when Kathy and I went to Thelner. I have a recommendation uh, of equipment that they suggested from May that I probably passed out earlier, but uh, they just sent back a recommendation of you need this and you need that. So do we have a written needs assessment or analysis? Uh, I'm not sure. If we're, I have a list of equipment they suggested that we replace our equipment with. I mean, basically they said our cameras could go out at any time and uh, basically every time we turn on the uh, stuff in the other room, I have to jiggle this knob and reboot this. And and the other thing is uh, the equipment that the, the audio and the uh, Panja unit is what we're replacing. It's already been replaced in 2005 or six. We had a major accident with our air conditioning unit that's in that room to keep it cool, froze up, and soaked everything. So we had to replace it, and at that time, there was no new equipment, so we had to use, we were using refurbished equipment in, in that room, the, uh, like the you know, electronics and the computer units are to refurbished, so. Probably the needs is it's 15 years old. They didn't, they, they, they were asking, did they say, well, but equipment is in this condition? Yeah. No, they just said that they sent me a list of what we should replace this. Be but when you add this up, this is a lot of money, and for someone like me, I just don't know what it all means. And I think it would be important to understand what we're spending the money for and why we need to spend the money. Is that well, in your three? Is in the three-year well, plan? They, they did not. They did not say this camera is in this shape. Basically, after looking at the three cameras, which are not high definition, what you know, they said you uh, you cannot replace. You know, these cameras are. You know, when I asked them what should I do with them, can you sell them? They told me to use them as boat anchors. Um, Ted, can I just interrupt? Um, it says here on the proposal, we propose the following leading edge playback automation solution 
from that, I take it that this is what we, these are the items that we need to be able to record and play back. <coughs> this is, you know, I, I'm looking at this and I'm seeing you need, you know, it's like when you get a, um, a pattern to sew something, uh, the, the, the notions list tells you yeah. you need this, you need that, right, Kathy? A notion notions list. Yeah. That um, in order to make this outfit, you need this equipment. I'm I'm reading it this way. Um, is there fat in this? I guess what Bob is asking is there fat in this? Is there extra stuff in here that there's, makes there's you don't? There's nothing add, extra. Basically, what they came out and told us is that we're living on prayer. Okay. And, and, and that was a verbal, that wasn't written. They basically said, you know, your, your cameras, um, you know, this camera here is acting up on us all the time. Sometimes the camera operator will stop it, and I don't know if you ever watched it, and all of a sudden it's just wrong. You know, that, that kind of stuff. And, and basically they looked at all our equipment and said, it's not worth fixing, and we need to replace it based on the life of electronics. No, I'm just, also, the only point I'm trying to make is if we're going to spend 62000 we should have some kind of document on file that justifies the spending of the dollars, particularly for those who aren't technical. And if we're going to vote on this, I think we should understand what the process that went by. I, I see numbers, but I don't know what's behind them. We're not, we're not even close to voting on it right now. Basically, like I said, what I'm trying to do is, I, I'd like to vote on it next month. But what I'm trying to do is put some time and some research and is there a better way? But as far as the equipment goes, um, you know, Kathy was there. They told us they were, you know, it could go any time. And it's not worth replacing with old equipment because most of this stuff is uh, um, not replaceable. All right? Do we have an inventory? Uh, I don't have an inventory in the last... Uh, a couple of years. Like, no, we do uh, have something. I have an inventory, yeah. but it's, it includes all this, but it's, you know. Yeah, I sent it out, remember? We, we, we got an inventory of, of the equipment. But I mean, it's, if I you took if you that. took an inventory and then went line by line and detailed the condition of it and it needs replacement and why it needs replacement, that's your document. Well, we, we did not do we, that. They had basically, they, they, they went with the, the years. The basically. experts came in here. Fifteen years. And looked at it and and, well, and uh, probably some of it was based on the date and the age of the equipment. And, the, and it and basically said if it breaks, it can't be replaced. So, so well, Ted, why don't you, I mean, if you're looking to get a proposal, what Bob is asking is obviously very valid. Have you, have you sent this out to other people for, uh, to do an analysis as well? That will validate this or, or, or invalidate it based off of the other people's responses. Yeah, because this is just one quote, in. right? Yeah, this is just one company. This is Stellner, right? You want, you want so an RFP on this. That is correct. I mean, you should actually send it out like Blue Water, for example, mm -hmm. okay? Blue Water can come in and do an analysis of this equipment, and they could say, you know what, I agree to it uh, with everything they said here, or they can come back and say, you know what, I partially agree, or mm -hmm. I totally disagree with what they have here. You're not living on borrowed time. This key element in the, the switcher, I'm just making all of this up, for example, and the, and the room over there is the only piece that really needs to be up is to be upgraded. Now, if you want to take this equipment and donate it to the school and upgrade, and upgrade, you know, to tie it into your future plan, that's an option. But I'm just saying, right now, all I'm seeing, I agree with Bob, is it's one one quote. This is one person telling you you're bar on borrowed time. I have one other. Well, that, that's not what that's telling me. All right. Okay. Well, that's what you said. No, no, no. No, that's not what I said. I said they came in and looked at our equipment. I told them how it's operating, how it's not operating, what we're doing to make it operate. All right, and then I told them what I would like to do. And that is a quote on what I asked them to tell me how, it, how much it would cost for what I would like to do. All right, and I didn't, they're not sending that to me based on their analysis. I listened to their analysis and then looked and saw how I would how I would correct this system, that system, and this system. There's like four different systems in that room. Mm -hmm. And so then I said to them how I would like to do it and what timetable I'd like to do it on. And then we went and looked at the things that I asked them to show me. 
and they showed it to me, and then I asked them to send me a cost for what I asked them. So that that is not based on they saw an opportunity to come in and say that oh, you get rid of the camera. They just basically said, well, if that camera malfunctions, it's not even worth fixing. Who did? And, and, and while we were while we're talking here, I'm just thinking about something that Lauren said about the iPhone having this capability. And and trust me, I am not a tech person. I um, I have learned how to use it. Um, but long story short, I hear on the media, I hear on the news, you know, that in the future, and I don't know how far in the future they expect most of our television experience to come through. Um, the internet or through computers. I know they're selling TV computers at the Apple store, you know, where, where you're getting all that. So I'm, I'm thinking too that while we're looking at replacing equipment for television, um, and again, to know that I don't know if this is, if this is the same kind of equipment you would use to do to create a, a video to then play back on the internet. But you know how our phones went from wires to um, voice over internet protocol and it changed a whole number of things. I'm wondering if we also look at an alternate uh, list, you know, for what would we need if if the if there was a, a a sea change in the way television was broadcast. You know, what would we need if there was a a shift in in the way television was being um, used? Would would we look at replacing something for 15 years, or would we look at five years? Because in five years, the whole game is going to change. So um, that might be something we want to consider as well. Which is part of the needs assessment. I agree you need a needs assessment followed up by an RFP with at least a minimum of three quotes back. That's just good business. And I think well, talking I, I, to schools is probably very helpful. I, this, this is a, a favor by a company to give me a ballpark idea to develop a plan. This is a start. To go forward. This is, this is you know, you, you, I, I, I reached out to a a company that we have had a wonderful relationship to design this room, that knows this room inside and out, and said, okay. And, and, and let, me, let me step back and then kind of answer what who had to say. The criteria I told them is kind of on a personal basis. I turned 60 years old this year. I plan on retiring probably in six years. When I leave here, over the course of the next three years, I want the township could be in a position that we're not in year 2000 looking at 220. I want them to be in year 2015 with equipment that's going to last them through 2030. All right, this is the last upgrade that I'm going to do personally do for this township or, or overseas. So that was the criteria. I we've had situations where we've gone into technology and purchased year old technology. And by the time it was installed on our desks, it was 18 months old. And by the time we learned how to use it, there's two, another generation of technology already out there, and we're, we're, we're behind. So what the, the criteria I told Solner is, I want cutting edge. When we upgrade, it's not going to be upgraded to 2010 or 2009. I want to upgrade to 2013, 14, 15, wherever it is. So that was the first thing. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to leave, but, uh, you know, in, in 2020, the township's looking at another $60,000 to upgrade to whatever the technology leaps to that. So that was the first thing. The second thing is that we're talking about what, what this quote is and what this beginning of this exercise is, is for the systems for us to record the meetings, not to send it out in whatever format, but first of all, just the ability for a three camera shoot in this room, which is now a television studio, and, and to upgrade from 1999 technology to 2015 technology. All right, so um, 
that, that, that's the other criteria. So the, the ability to send it out to uh, internet television, that's the streaming, yeah. that's the, that's the that's next cell, that's the third part of the system. The uh, airwave or the nexus or whatever we purchased to send it out will give us the capability so that the residents can get it on. Right now they can get it on their computers, but we're looking at so they can get it on their iPhones and iPads and whatever they've developed in the last two years. So that's, we're looking at that solution. But the cameras and the recording and the directing, that's just basic TV technology that uh, we're upgrading. All right, so. Um, we might want to do an RFP. We might yeah. want to sit down and get bids on what well, you vision. The vision well, we will, we will. Just understand what I handed you is, yeah, it's a, is start. a favor from a company to give us where where an idea a starting point based on what I told them mm -hmm. an idea of what my idea was going to cost. Well, I, maybe I'm wrong, but I thought I thought you wanted to put could have us vote on this next month. I mean, no, we, no, no. I, we have a month. Before we vote on it, yeah, I would I want to get yeah. with this group with the school and it's find out. Like circle, right? it's, uh, yeah. you know. What I want to present to the township as part of the budget is an idea, an outline of a three-year capital improvement plan. And like the last part of this, as I, I see, I vision it, won't, won't take place to the budget of, you know, what are we, 13, 2015. So we're, I'm looking at three years. And what's it going to entail is we are collecting somewhere between 100 and eighty and one hundred ninety thousand dollars in franchise fees. The cable commission's only been, we, we, this year we spent one hundred fifteen. So the money's there for franchise fees to pay for this, except we're all going to have to tell we'll get the board to say, yeah, you can use an extra thirty thousand dollars or yeah. twenty thousand or thirty. So that that's the first thing we're going to have to convince the board to let us have this shown this capital improvement. But this this initial plan came from. So that, that's all I'm trying to develop. No, that's not, it's, it's actually exciting, but Lauren, you're going to take this to the board. What do you need to take to the board to make this happen? Because, um, well, I think that they're going to, they're going to want a lot. Um, I mean, we have to do, we're a long way. Uh, yeah, I think <laughs> long way. definitely a needs analysis, a, a wish list of, you know, what we want versus what we need. I think looking long term as well as immediate future. Um, Looking at you know other resources, whether it's purchasing in, you know inventory off of eBay, you know looking at all the options that are out there, partnering with some of the you know other communities, whether it's you know we have them come in with their three cameras and we don't replace cameras, but we just send it out on the feed out. There's a lot of options. I think that we're going to need to ha actually have to explore those options. Um, so I think, yeah. The first step is, to me, in my mind, is we need to sit down with the school district to find out what exactly they're looking at, and then and how see if it's cooperative it. first. Exactly. Start with start yeah. with the first step. Well, Let's that, see if everybody wants to play. Well, like if the school, if we could do it, I mean, the, the switcher that the school has, we can use here. So, yeah. so I mean, that's a possibility, and then they can use our playback equipment. That's kind of like the trade-off. Well, so, I, I think. Lauren just and, and Bob and, and Sean were all kind of outlined, I think, a rudimentary plan that uh, maybe in the next month before next meeting or in the next two months, we, we find out do the schools want to, as Kathy say, play, and then we find out what, if they do want to play, we do a needs assessment for both organizations, or we just do, we do one where everyone on this commission feels comfortable saying, yes, we agree, this is, this is what, what we need, so that Lauren can actually take something to the board um, that says, you know, this is this is the this is the map of the future for um, televised meetings on Grove Seal, and then when you know they buy into that, we can generate an RFP and then go out for the competitive bids, and I think. Um, Using internet things like the state of Michigan bid system and so forth, we can actually expand our um, outreach yeah. to get bids from even farther afield. I know that this is a specialty field, and not everyone 
uh, is, you know, not everyone is going to bid on it from Southeast Michigan. We might get bids from other areas. I mean, we, the one of the original designers of this came from what Wisconsin Minnesota. or Minnesota. Um, so, but that we then actually do follow that process, and it's going to take time. You know, this won't happen from today till tomorrow, but that would give us a roadmap on where we're going. I'd like to explore the idea of putting that into motion, some some kind of a three or four point plan, so that you know we verbalize a lot, but I'd hate to lose it all and have and see it not happen the way we talked about. So I think it's appropriate that we put it in the form of a motion that highlights the three or four main points. I, I, I brought this up, but I think we're getting ahead of ourselves. First of all, let, let me understand that the idea to do this came from the board, came from the treasurer, came from Ted Van Oss in a meeting with him and Brian at our last budgetary meeting. So the, the meeting, the, the German idea started with him. All right. Um, where we are right now, I don't want to make any decision until we find out what's the best way to operate. Uh, do we have a partner or we don't have a partner, right? You know, the old line from the Godfather, if the money's on the table, I get up, wake up for my nap, we, I have a partner, if I don't, I don't, you know. And uh, so that's, that's what we need to do, find out if we have a partner in this. Then if we have a partner, then we can trim it down. Also, if you look at the I know you're concerned about the cost. The cost entertains old enough the debt estimate includes all the wires, all the nuts and bolts, all the brackets, training, and warranty. So well, I'm, 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 more, that so I'm more concerned about the process, not the I mean, I, I, well, know, I, under, I understand. Process. I, and I understand the process, and I told you earlier in what I was telling you that we were going to go out for bids for all this that this wasn't in stone and we aren't committed in any way to Thalner. And they know it, and like I said, he did us a favor by giving me a starting point. So what is the next step? The next step is, what, is what, I would start well, with well, Okay, so uh -huh. we're going to do that, but besides that, I keep hearing it's 15-year-old equipment, so we need equipment. Is that the final? That's the point. Is so if we need equipment, we're going to spend the money, but if we spend the money, we want to spend it wisely. Well, I, and that's, um, I hope that that's my reputation for this department. Uh, it's not, no, it's not about, it's, it's it's about, about, it's not about not, reputation. It's about, it's about not, the proper we're process. We're not racing into this. We're, uh, there's no, I, 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 I know what you want. I want, I'm trying to slow you down, too, because I don't want to make any decisions until I know what the political the first step. will is. And in the meanwhile, <laughs> what we could do is review this, Look for vendors, discuss it. Uh, there's email is always going, and we could have a little private meeting if you'd like, a little special meeting. I don't think there's a need for that, though. I don't either. There, there, there's no need for that. Let's be honest no. here, because if, if, if we have to understand what are the requirements first. Once you have the requirements, then you go out for a bid. So I think really we've exhausted an extensive amount of time on this. I think really what, we sh what we're seeing, you're both saying the same thing here, is, is the next steps are, uh, Lauren will meet with the school board, get it together, have, have that meeting, understand what their wants and requirements are, see if it matches what it is, see if we're going to collaborate together, and then once we have that, that puts us into the requirements exactly. standpoint. Exactly. Once you have the requirements standpoint, then you go for an RFP. Are we are you straight? Know, if any of you okay. have the uh, need or want to tour, you know, come in and I, I work with me and I'll show you everything we got and, and uh, Show you how it works and where it is, and what we you know show us what you know the equipment that we do have. If you need a better understanding, mm -hmm. um, just give me a call, and I'll be happy to work with you. The only one one last comment I do have to make is is that you mentioned in your comment about obviously you want would like to retire, which is awesome, but my question is is. Do you have a backup in place or somebody that you're thinking about that we, you're already training or will be training? Well, I, 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 like I said, I work with three. Right now I'm down to about three main people. The lady that's in the mm -hmm. control room right now has worked with me for 10 years. Okay. And she, there's nothing better she'd like to do is to, to do video. She's in the medical field at the moment. But uh, if I were to walk out here tomorrow, I'm sure her application would be in as I was walking out the door. The other, I work uh, with uh, a gentleman named Kelly Marcott that does a lot of work with me. Uh, Bill Maker has worked uh, for Racine, Wisconsin, worked for Comcast, works in the area. Uh, he's looking for a full-time job. And then 
the lady that uh, I collaborated out of Riverview. So I have two, three. There's multiple options. Uh, multiple options. And you guys will choose it. You know. And six years. We, right. And the whole world changes. Uh, <laughs> goes, yeah, he might not be retiring. Yeah, you know, it's 75 or something. Yeah. So <laughs> but we belabor this enough. Uh, right. Lauren, you'll get back to all of us, and then we'll set up our meeting. And we can, in the meanwhile, review this. And, have, and uh, feel free to talk to Ted. Come in here and review the uh, equipment that we have. It would it'd be in, important yeah, for everybody. I, I totally agree with you. I just don't want to race ahead of it until we know. I mean, no, I didn't either until you said you wanted to vote next month. No, I was saying I wanted to. Um, but since, you know, since to do with the school, I want to back up. You know, what I have, well, it's not even a vote on that because what I have to do, so you understand, in the next six weeks is going to be a lot of budgetary working. And I have to make a proposal in front of Brian and uh, Eric and Ted, and there'll be discussions there if there's any will at all. If they don't have any will at all, the, the whole idea is going to die. Then, then I will finalize the budget, and they will approve it, and then it'll be presented again to a study session of the whole board, and it'll be discussed again. That's in March, all right? And, 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 we, and when the specifics won't be discussed, the generalities, and after the board says, okay, we're willing to go in that direction, and then on the, the, the meeting, the public meeting, that's when the budget's finalized. After that, then, then we will explore the specifics. So we're not in any hurry. To, oh, the only thing I, I'm trying to do is see if there's a will on the board. I'm going to present a budget that includes, those will be ideas, not specifics. Well, and I'm going to present that budget to them, and they're going to have to say, yeah, we, we will allow you to, to, to do that, or we, no, we don't think this is a good year to do it, and then, then we'll proceed from there. This might be a mute point in, in six weeks. Well, we've belabored this enough. Do you have any other uh, things you want Just to discuss? Just a couple of production things. Okay. Uh, uh, we haven't uh, done another show. Uh, we, we've got two-thirds of another uh, ILI done, but... Uh, Pam Perchie wants to do a roundtable discussion with the business leaders that she hasn't set up yet. So as soon as we do that, uh, the next I and I will be in. I think she has something. I think she's going to give you a call. I think she um, yesterday was able to get more people on board for that. She's hoping to maybe tape towards the end of this week. So I think she's going to give you a call on that. Okay. And then the last and the latest thing that we put up, and uh, I just got it. We picked it up and put it on the computer tonight. As we've done a promo for the February 4th meeting, is mm -hmm. it? February, February 4th, 4th uh, mm -hmm. meeting of the kayak. Uh, informational, informational meeting. Informational meeting that they're going to have at Centennial Farm. And we went over to uh, Kayak Connections and did a promo with Kathy and the representative there. So I'll look for that over the starting this weekend. So basically, that's it. So oh, wait. I think I sort of throw something <laughs> Oh, Madam Chair, if I may. Yeah, <laughs> um, with mentioning the budget and with potentially going out for RFPs for um, new video, whether it's any, you know, any time in the next three to six months, but I know that we do have an RFP for a web redesign and upgrade. Is there room for both of those in the budget at this time, if yeah. that were to come to fruition? Well, the RFP is yeah, I would think that would be not a problem at all with timing. Okay. The reality is we haven't even gotten a bid yet. We've had five people interested. Right. It's just the start. Then you, you start the dance. Yeah. No, I just didn't know. I mean, if both of them were to come to a head, the 31st, that, and that would be capital. Mm -hmm. So in the, okay. in the 31st of March, not a lot happens that quickly. Right. And you, would, you, you could uh, tell us better uh, the speed of which a municipality's RFPs is, is perhaps not lightning. No, I, I, I'm not saying it is, but I just wanted to know as, no, as far as budget no. expense itself, is there room We've for got both? I believe that the website um, redesign comes out of this current it's budget. It's $6,000 mm -hmm. okay. in the budget for that. And what, Ted, and what I, think I think you're looking to propose seven. will go into the next yeah, well, yes. That would be well, capital. I'm go to the board and say, listen, this is my budget for 2013-14. I also need X amount of dollars to add to the, for this year and next year as a capital improvement budget. So what I'm going to go in there with uh, my hat in my hand and on my knees saying, give me an extra 30000 can we spend an extra 30000 and this is the plan on how I want to spend it. 
But there's no specifics. It's just no, generality. No. You can't. You, you can't I, have. Well, it. I can't get specific until I know I can do it. Yeah. But you're, right. But the, and that's what I wanted to kind of inter, uh, inter, interject, interject with is the list that you presented us is is the beginning or the kernel of that that you can tell the board this is the ballpark of what these things cost and this is and I think the the message about we're operating on a prayer is that they need to understand there is some need Sense now we're not right. just dreaming urgency yeah yeah that we actually if we want to continue broadcasting for the next year or two we need to really start looking at Ted Van Oz said listen I need some, I need some ideas yeah. uh, we need if we're going to do this I, because I basically presented the three-year idea to him in the systems, and he said, we need some ideas, we need a plan on how we do it over a period of time, and I, I need some ideas for the cost. And, they, that, and, that's, and, what and that's what we've done. Yeah, they want to know what these things cost. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ted. Uh, chairman report, pretty much Ted took it. Mm -hmm. uh, we put in our RFP. It was published in the Yale camera on the 14th. We're waiting to see who applies. Uh, I think it, it's exciting. It's exciting to see uh, the interest. They're from all over the country, which is kind of interesting too. And also I was going to mention the kayak promo, which again, I encourage everyone to come down to Centennial Farm on Monday, February 4th at 7 p.m. And it'll, it, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, what we can come up with for a program. What's the kayak program? Well, what we're trying to do is just have kayaking. Uh, last year there was a, a, a lot of, um, shall we say, uh, exciting discussion by the board uh, regarding where to kayak. And, and they don't have an organized kayak uh, evening on the island offered. Uh, it's, I, I contacted uh, Dale, I've talked to Tim Rooney, and I, I talked to uh, Riverside Kayaking, who already does these programs in the, in the communities. And I said, uh, do you have any night that you could do this? And it's no cost to lead people around the community. And there's, you know, we're an island. And so they said, yep, we can do it on Tuesday nights. Uh, we're very into safety, and, and they wanted to do it out of Water's Edge, where we have parking, where we have uh, bathrooms, where we have a restaurant. And uh, we're just going to see if people are interested. Uh, it would not be worth their while probably to do it for, you know, five people. But if there, you know, if there's a, a number of people that are interested, and I would say 15 to 50, is a good number. Uh, see if they want to do it. Do they want to go through the uh, canals? And we've offered it to people outside the island. Uh, we have an interview with the uh, the News Herald. I'll be contacting the News and the Free Press, just trying to stimulate interest to bring people to the island, to show them how wonderful it is to live here, and to enjoy the island. It's great cardio, and I mean the whole thing. It's just a wonderful thing. So they've been talking about it for years. Um, um, Otis Conway, who I've had a long chat with, he tried this 20 years ago, and you know they had a lot of interest, but it never happened. So they'll come here on Tuesday nights if this if everybody wants to do it when, at that meeting. And at six o'clock we'll go out and paddle. And it, it's, you know, pretty uh, non competitive. Mm -hmm. And they they actually do um, one thing that Otis and Dick Weiss did a number of years ago is that they actually organized a, a training session for new kayakers mm -hmm. in the water's edge pool. Yes. So that you could learn how to you know, tip over and get out safely, et cetera. And I think wa the water's edge, um, this is like the last of anything I know, right, that's still going. Um, the water's edge commission is really looking at, at water's edge at the south part of their waterfront as um, the beginnings, the seeds of a place where people can come to launch their kayaks. Mm -hmm. Maybe not build a launch, well, but create this and, and start getting you know, like how um, a few years ago uh, they put up a skating rink in the parking lot at, at Water's Edge. And they built it and people came and now we're building a real rink um, mm -hmm. for rollerblading in the summer and skating on ice in the winter. And it took about five or six years, but it started really small. Baby steps. Just getting to see where people are interested. And I think what Kathy has tried to organize and bring together is 
is that is that interest here? Yeah, is it? And I, I think it is. And but we'll find out. And uh, one thing that we did discuss because there's been all this commotion about how to launch and how to launch safely, and there are these, um, they're uh, kind of like jet ski. Uh, things you, you park your jet ski in that you can launch a kayak in. And they're temporary, they're not permanent, so you don't have to worry about the DEQ. And they're inexpensive, and we can get a couple for the, from the township. Put them in, launch people out, and just enjoy Grow Seal. Uh, I know they do it at the Yacht Club, and it works great. Um, you know, people enjoy it, 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 but it's a private group. This is for public, and this is to bring people, not only to bring people from, uh, from outside the island, but to for the people on the island to enjoy Water's Edge, enjoy what we have, and kayaking is one of the fastest growing sports right now. And women especially are finding it to be very appealing. So, it, and, and you don't have to have a partner. It's not like golf where you need a foursome. You can come by yourself. It's it's very communal. It, it, people are, are really getting excited about it. So, I'm hoping it, it, it's a, a it's a win for the community. That that's the whole point. Can you just keep in the back of your mind? What about like stand up paddle boards too? That is that's, I mean, that's what, that I, is coming I, too. But that, yeah. yeah, but I'll tell you, that's really hard. I've, I I watch the girls when they're doing it and they go down. But you know what? Let's again baby steps. Right. There has been so much commotion about kayaking the past year right. that I just thought, why don't we settle it down? It gives something to offer the community, gives something to offer people to come over here, take a look at what we have. We have so many canals, and if we run out of the canals here, we can go over to Gibraltar, we can go into Wyandotte. There's, there's so much here that you don't have in many places. And we One. can mount a GITV camera. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. If you have those GoPro cameras. In fact, uh, my husband said that he uh, he would be happy to take our little boat and have uh, the gentleman who did the promo uh, to follow us around one one night, and he said, "You know, you can do it in a 17 footer. I got a little boat that I can manu maneuver, and it's just I can't tell you the the joy we've had going through the canals. Uh, people they always smile when they see kayakers because they're so pretty. The boats, especially my new one, but you know they're so pretty and they really um, they just uh, it, it's non invasive. You know, there's no gas. There's there's no uh, noise. You, you really can't uh, have adult beverages when you're doing this too much, so it, there's not a lot, a lot of problems. It's just paddling and enjoying it. And it'd only be for about an hour to an hour and a half at night if the people are interested, if they come. And it's just cool. So that's yeah, Monday, that's February 4th, where at? It's at Centennial Farms. What time? It's at 7 p.m. And everybody's invited to come on island, off island. Please come. Well, I think so that water's edge. Excuse me, no, no, we'll be paddling out of Water's oh, Edge. It's at okay. Centennial Farm, which is south of Bellevue and off a of third. And uh, we'll have coffee there. I have a feeling we'll have some cookies, chocolates, and, you know, entice people to come. And just see what they have to say. If they're interested, it seems like uh, there's a, a big interest, and that's what we're, we're doing it for. And, uh, and the, one other thing, uh, when we were at the meeting Monday night, Mr. Loftus, our supervisor, was talking about putting up, is it Nextel, um, Ted? That is Nixle. 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 Yeah, Nixle. And that we could uh, probably uh, invite the people that are on our Facebook, the township Facebook, to migrate over. Mm -hmm. So that's something we can uh, look into doing, you know, do an invite of some sort. I called them all twice and I haven't got the day. We used to have it. Uh huh. And there was absolutely no response to it for like two years, so I took it off and did, I let it lapse. So I, I, I called them up to see if we could just renew it and get it back on. So. Hopefully by the end of the week or next week, we'll have it done. And if it's on, then we could invite people from our Facebook to go and see if they have interest in it. Well, now anything you put on this automatically goes on Facebook or goes on Facebook. There you go. So we already have uh, more interest than we had before. Okay, so that's all I have. Um, new business. And the new business, we were talking about uh, next year's uh, chairman. Well, if you don't mind me being the new girl on the commission, I would like to make a motion to appoint Kathy Walker to serve as another term as chairperson of the Communication Commission. Thank you. I second that. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 I guess Aye. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I accept. Thank you. Uh, do we have a discussion on anything we have not oh, talked I, about? I guess uh, maybe it's too early, but we could make another motion so that Ted can 
uh, and Lauren can bring this information to the board, is to make a motion to continue televising our communication commission meetings for 2013. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Okay, and we have a motion, a second, and it is passed. Uh, any other points? Uta? No. no? Anybody else? Okay. Yeah, we did, right at the beginning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right at the beginning. I thought, oh, wait a second. No, we did the we agenda. Yeah, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. You're right. We did not approve the minutes. I'm sorry. Thank you. Uh, has everybody reviewed the minutes? Yes. I thought it was the agenda. <laughs> Any uh, comments or corrections? If not, do we have a motion to approve? A motion to approve. Second? Second. Second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 I'm just going to stand because I wasn't here. Great. So. Not a problem. Okay. Anything else? And thank you for pointing that out. I thought I combined the two. <laughs> combined the two. The meeting on the 13th, is at 7 p.m. again? Or yes, it is. Is that okay with everyone, the, the timing of it? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, I know you come a long way, and I and I know you come a long way, Sean. So we want to make sure everybody can attend it as mo as often as possible. Alrighty, if everybody's on board, yeah. do yes. Uh, are you put, you're saying the minutes and the minutes on demand. Yes. Right? Yes. Yeah, so you might just want to mention that where they can find the minutes there on the minutes on demand page on the web page now instead of the. Thank you. Yeah, we're. We're doing it minutes on demand so that we have a, a uh, we're consistent with the, the township, and it makes it a lot neater. Great, and then Ted, you will actually add Uda's name to the website. Pardon? Add Uda's name to the website so mm -hmm. that she's listed as a member. Okay, all right, whatever it takes. <laughs> okay, do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll make motion a motion. To adjourn. Second. 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 And we are adjourned at eight thirty-five. <laughs>